Hey folks, I'm Brendan and you're watching the Overqualified Henchman. Today we're looking at the loot crate for January 2016. Theme? Invasion! For those of you coming in late, Loot Crate is a subscription box. Each month you get mailed a crate full of geeky paraphernalia, knickknacks, collectibles, accessories, that kind of thing. Either the catch or the selling point, depending on what kind of person you are, is that the theme and the specific contents of each crate are a mystery until you get it in the mail and get to open it for yourself. So how does the January Invasion Crate stack up? Yeah, let's take a look. Each Loot Crate comes with a zine explaining are we still saying zine? Is zine still a thing? Each issue talks about what's in the crate, giving some background, some articles, and some interviews. So getting into the contents of the crate itself, we've got this X-Files t-shirt. Uh, now that's a design by Francis Minoza, otherwise known as Nicebleed Online. Uh, he was the winner of the Threadless contest to design the shirt for this crate. And the runners-up actually have their designs printed in the zine, so we got to see those too. Definitely captures that whole uh, running through the woods at night theme that X-Files had going for it. Probably the biggest physical item in the crate this month is this facehugger plush made by Kid Robot. Pretty cute in a really disturbing way. This is one where I think your mileage is going to vary a little bit. If you've got a younger geek running around, this will be a lot of fun for them to play with. For me, as a d display piece, it takes up a little too much room for me to want to use it as a decoration. It's probably my least favorite thing in the crate this month. That said, Loot Crate did make sure there was a little bit of playability, even for adults. <laughs> Next up is a Space Invaders vinyl figure. As you can see, it's a three-dimensional rendering of the aliens from the old Space Invaders video game. Uh, this one's two-toned, blue on the bottom, green on top. There were two other color combinations as well, so you got one out of three of those. This is really simple, but I feel like it hits the concept right out of the park. It's a really good size, uh, it feels nice and solid, it's got a good weight to it. This is definitely something you could stick on any bookshelf, uh, give it a little pop of color. I'm a fan. Bleep, bloop, bleep, bloop, bleep, bloop, bleep, bloop, bleep, bloop, bloop. Next up, we've got a prop replica of the multi-pass from The Fifth Element. Fifth Element is one of my go-to rainy day movies. It's a sort of movie I can watch over and over again and enjoy it every time. And this is a really good representation of uh, Lilu's multi-pass. It's actually got a bit of real-world functionality, too. You can slide out Lilu's card there uh, and put in a piece of real-world photo ID. This is actually something a little bit different for this crate, but I'm a big fan. Uh, we've got an envelope here with two mini prints of movie posters. So we've got The Day the Earth Stood Still and The War of the Worlds. Now these are both from the early 1950s and they're classics. The prints are really striking as well uh, and they're nice size so you can get some small frames for those. They're definitely going up on my wall. Probably the most practical item in the Loot Crate this month is this X-Files LED flashlight. Uh, it's definitely thematic for the X-Files. Scully and Mulder spent a lot of time running around with flashlights. And in a classy move by Loot Crate, they did include the batteries. Now, maybe the most exciting thing about this month's crate isn't actually about this month's crate, but about the crates going forward. Going forward, every Loot Crate is guaranteed to have a t-shirt in it. The t-shirts were always very common, but not every crate necessarily had a t-shirt up until now. Now, Nerdblock, one of Loot Crate's direct competitors, has had a guaranteed t-shirt for a while now, and it's always been a pretty big selling point. Regardless of what else is in the crate, you know you can always use another t-shirt, so it definitely adds some consistency to the value there. On the other hand, it does tie up a lot of the value of every crate in a t-shirt, so we're probably not going to see other clothing items like the Breaking Bad apron from last year. That said, Loot Crate does have its Level Up service, uh, which is an optional add-on for things like long sleeve shirts, sleep pants, socks. So if you really want kind of larger clothing items other than t-shirts, you can check that out. The other big piece of news is that going forward, instead of coming with a collectible button, each Loot Crate is going to come with a collectible pin. You can see that this month's design is an alien in sort of a big robot suit clutching a Loot Crate in its claws. This is pretty much just a straight upgrade. Now, I was big into collecting pins like these when I was younger, and the design is cool. Going along with the pin is the idea that each crate's now going to come with additional digital content. You can go to lootcrate.com slash pins, and if you've got an active subscription for that month, you'll get a code for some kind of download. The DLC for this month is the first issue of Letter 44. It's an Oni Press comic written by Charles Sewell and drawn by Alberto Albuquerque. It's sort of a House of Cards meets Independence Day sort of thing. It's a little hard men making hard decisions for my personal taste, but it is really well done. Uh, and getting the first issue for free is a great way to check it out if it sounds interesting to you. So, final verdict. Was the Invasion Loot Crate worth it? Well, I really like those mini prints. I'm a big fan of the Space Invaders figurine, and that t-shirt design by Nicebleed is pretty slick. 
the Invasion Crate had the tough job of following up last month's Galactic Crate, which had a bunch of really cool Star Wars gear in it, and set the tone for 2016. Overall, it's probably not one of my favorite crates, but it did get me excited about the t-shirts and the pins for the year to come, so I think it did its job. You'll be able to find plenty of other reviews and nerdy content at the Overqualified Henchman in the weeks to come, so make sure to subscribe so you know when a new video comes out. Drop me a comment down below to let me know what you thought of the Invasion Crate and what your favorite item was, and you can do me a solid by remembering to like and share. Until next time, keep on henching.